Hey everybody, it's Eric from epautos.com, your libertarian car guy, and this is video number two um, about Project Beetle. Uh, this is the 72 uh, Beetle that I'm helping my young apprentice to fix up for his daily driver. Uh, if you saw the first video, you'll know we had a little bit of an issue uh, with the intake system, and uh, in brief, basically what that was, uh, a cursory inspection of the engine turned out that it had the incorrect Solex 28 carburetor, which is not correct for this model. It should have a 34. There's the 34. A buddy of mine uh, had a spare, and we rebuilt that and put it on the engine, and the engine wouldn't idle, oddly. So I went back and checked everything that I had done, uh, including tearing down the carburetor again, checking the pilot jet, main jet, just making sure everything uh, was clear, not occluded, everything adjusted per specs. And while it would run, it would not hold an idle. So I really began to scratch my head and resorted to basic diagnostics, including starting to look for vacuum leaks. Took a can of gum out and sprayed the area of the base of the intake manifold, which you can see here. What you probably can't see now because it's been repaired is that a huge chunk of the intake manifold right here was literally bashed off by somebody with a hammer. Um, my buddy Tim welded this back together, but at any rate, what we found was this part was chunked off and there was a bolt that somebody had put in a hole here where the EGR valve had been, or EGR port had been, I should say, and then took RTV, room temperature vulcanizing rubber gasket maker, and sort of cake smoothed it all over to make it look like it was okay. And then I went back and looked at the carburetor again, and it turns out it has this adapter on the bottom of it. And the reason for that adapter was to offset the carburetor so that it would sit canted off a little bit in that direction so as to clear the gaping gaps and holes in the intake manifold. And that's why it wouldn't idle. So at any rate, we have fixed that. Uh, the manifold is now correctly, uh, it, it's now in one piece again. And I went ahead and sandblasted the thing, make it look nice, and uh, we painted it black. I know that's not exactly correct, but it had some fairly significant rust on some of the surfaces. So figured it would be nice to just go ahead and paint it black. Uh, and then, while I had everything apart, and again, I know these are supposed to be bare, uh, unfinished cast aluminum, but I thought it would look nice to paint them with uh, gray exhaust manifold paint for contrast, so that's been done. And right now I'm just waiting for a set of boots and gaskets to put everything back together. And a couple other little small things. This isn't, you know, a show winner by any means, but I got some, uh, I got some nice bolts here for, uh, you know, for the uh, heat risers. And speaking of the heat risers, these heat risers uh, were completely occluded, blocked up with rust and stuff, and that's a pretty common problem with these old air-cooled beetles. Um, and my buddy Tim and I uh, figured out a way to fix that. Uh, took a drill with some wire, loose wire on it, uh, just kind of shoved it in there and, and rotted it out until it was clean, heated, rotted out, uh, and then used high pressure water to, uh, to degrease it. Anyway, got some nice fresh bolts to put everything pretty back together in here. I cleaned up the engine cases a little bit, and um, I'm also going to probably either paint or get a nice chrome cover for that coil. And hopefully we should have this thing up and running again in a couple of days. But anyway, thought you'd find that interesting, and look for the story up at epautos.com, and we'll catch up with you again soon.